Good morning. Today we're here to talk about sea trawling. With me I have scientists Sarah Hughes and fisherman Paul Sanfell. Now Paul, can you explain what sea trawling is? Sure. Sea trawling is a means of gathering large amounts of fish by dragging humongous 15-ton nets across the ocean floor, sometimes nets that are a mile wide, for a very cheap cost. Now, is there any environmental cost to this method? There are some very minimal environmental impacts. The rollers being dragged across the ocean floor may sometimes tear out the coral, but it's a very minimal impact. The coral can grow back. Now, as sea trawling has moved to deeper and deeper waters, you've moved to heavier, du heavier duty rollers. What difference does this make? Well, the rollers used to be made out of rubber, and, but recently they've been made out of heavier materials to improve effectiveness. Now, what's the purpose of these rollers? These rollers are sometimes also called rock hoppers. They're designed to prevent the net from tearing, and, and, that, and because that would, be, that would allow the fish to escape, they're very important. Thank you, Paul. Now, Sarah, you oppose sea trawling. Well, I believe sea trawling should be illegal because even though it's a heavy-duty way to catch fish, like Paul said, it destroys the oceanic ecosystems. As the sea um, nets drag across the ocean floor, it destroys many coral reefs and the species that live in it. And how long do these coral reefs take to repair themselves? Well, considering some have been untouched since the Ice Age, um, if these reefs are damaged, it could take hundreds of thousands of years to heal them, if at all. Because these areas grow so slowly and are so deep under the surface of the waves, when they are destroyed in minutes, the situation becomes severe. What areas of the world are most affected? Well, for one, coral reefs that exist in cold waters are especially harmed, including places in Scotland and Ireland. So how does our growing population affect this issue? Well, as the industry grows, it becomes more of an issue because more and more coral reefs are being destroyed. According to the independent newspaper website in 2006, the year of 1950's annual global total of wild fish caught was 20 million tons. But in 2001, only slightly over 50 years later, the global annual total rose to 92 million tons, which is more than four times what it was in 1950. And within 30 years um, before 2006, 35 million acres were destroyed around the world. And this is one of the problems that scientists are concerned over. In 2004, approximately 1,100 marine scientists signed a paper telling the United Nations to stop destroying sea, deep sea habitats. And the Deep Sea Conservation Coalition proposed to b the ban of trawling as well. This paper was released at the annual meeting for the American Association of Advancement of Science, AAAS. In 2006, the United Nations General Assembly agreed to control trawling. But other nations, such as Russia, Canada, Iceland, and Japan, protested the outlaw. By 2011, a compromise has been reached between the United Nations and the countries that opposed them. Now trawling is not completely outlawed, but there are four requirements that companies who wish to trawl must comply to. One is that the coalition has to perform impact assessments. These assessments are given to countries so that they can prove that they are not hurting the underwater environments with trawling. Another is that certain areas be protected from significant adverse impacts. These areas are closed off from trawlers. The next objective is to create rules so that when the organization comes upon a vulnerable area, they know how to treat it. The final requirement is to promise long-term maintaining of all deep-sea fish, whether they are targeted or not. Companies that wish to trawl must enter areas with caution and help to rebuild damaged stocks of fish.